Deep Face Deep Blurring, presented by the Stanford Scholar Initiative. With the advancement of deep neural networks, we now have more effective techniques to minimize blur in photographs. Photos capture our special moments and freeze them for generations to come. However, blurriness occurs due to incorrect focus, as well as due to the shaking of camera, low intensity, or many other possibilities. In order to ameliorate this situation, researchers have developed many different methods to attempt deblurring images. Unfortunately, existing methods don't really perform well with images. The result of the existing solutions is shown in the figure. The one on the top row was synthetically blurred with a uniform kernel, while the one on the bottom is a real-world blurred image. This clearly shows that existing solutions are not able to deblur real-world images well. There are many challenges in solving this problem. In the real-world imaging, various uncertainties can creep in, like lens saturation, depth variation, and lossy compression which cause the blurriness in the image. This increases complexity and makes the problem very difficult to solve. This paper aims to explore the question of whether domain-specific features can play an important role in improving face deblurring techniques. Another question it hopes to address is the challenge of developing an automatic framework to create a large dataset which can be used to test these algorithms. How did the authors approach this problem? The authors trained a modified version of convolutional network ResNet. The modified network contains blocks. Each block is a sequence of convolutional layers followed by rectified linear units. All the max pooling operations were disabled and skip connections were added in the second and third ResNet blocks. Batch normalization was added in every skip connection to ensure a common scale, and a loss function was applied to optimize the network while training. The authors also introduced an automatic framework which can collect a large data set from videos in a semi-supervised manner. For training, the authors scraped thousands of videos from YouTube. To evaluate the result of the proposed system, the authors used standard visual quality metrics of PSNR and SSIM for Gaussian blur. The images were synthetically blurred with Gaussian noise and reproduced to check the model. For motion blur, 70 images of the AFLW dataset yielded a good result. The results show that synthetically blurred images with Gaussian noise compared to the output of the network indicates that the method works well with Gaussian blur. Another test result in which the author simulated the real-world blurred images shows that the proposed algorithm seems to be working similarly to other contemporary deep blurring methods. Here are the comparisons among different methods for facial images. Additionally, to further emphasize the merits of the proposed method, there are images from internet sources in both indoors and outdoor scenes. The faces in those frames are of quite low resolution, while there is rapid movement in the scene. The qualitative results are visualized. Deep blurring has many real-world applications. Identifying criminals in blurry images or video frames of crime and improving the quality of daily smartphone photos are but two of the many applications for this technology. Although this paper focused on an algorithm to deblur human faces in particular, such methods could also be explored for wildlife and nature photography, albeit with different domain-specific features. Based on the results, for Gaussian blur, the proposed method works well. And for motion blur, the result shows similar performance compared to other contemporary methods. For real-world blurred images, the result shows that the proposed method avoids over-smoothing and deblurs the texture in a decent way, but it suffers in localizing specific features like the iris of the eye. The authors also developed a framework to retrieve online images for training. This technology has enabled us to make blurry images sharp and useful without any additional input, which can only be described as a revolution. Pictures are not only worth a thousand words, but also have precious memories embedded into them. We can now better unlock these memories even if the quality is initially compromised. Thank you for watching. Please visit scholar.stanford.edu for more videos.